That is actually the first time I see a realistic one-handed assault rifle reload. All right, show me more. So welcome everybody to another video on the channel. And today we're gonna talk about Anna Dolo. It's a new PvEVP survival game in the making. Uh, as you could see in the first clip, this will take a while until it's done, but I still want to introduce the game to you. So we're gonna talk about a few topics today. Let's have a look. So first of all, what is Anadolo? We're gonna start with that one. Then I wanna talk with you guys about the map of Anadolo, because you can see already with the screenshot in the background, you will see something unique today. Then I will cover some game features that are already mentioned and shown by the devs. So we're gonna talk about the modular weapons, we're gonna talk about a modular base defense, farms and labs, electricity and hacking. And then, I know nobody cares, but still, my personal opinion. Why should you be interested in Anadolo? Then I will cover the frequently asked questions because they will otherwise be in the comment section anyway. And then we will have an upcoming interview where you actually can ask questions to the devs. There are a few more topics that you guys normally want to see when I do these introduction videos, like for example physics, or platforms, or they're talking about the reputation system, but it's too early in the development to cover this yet. All right, let's get started. Let's start with the first topic, what is Anadolu? Okay, first of all, I mentioned it already, but this is a product in the making, it's in development, so whatever you will see in this video is not the final project and might still be topic to change. All right, what is Anadolu? So, it's a first person shooter, which I already like because um, it has PvP in it, and I'm not a huge fan of PvP games that have third person because of Pika advantage around corners. It's a sandbox survival game, I'm digging that one and well with the name Anadolu you probably can guess it already it sets in Turkey. It's inspired by Armor 2 DayZ mods, EFT, Subnautica and Fallout and a couple more games. And the development studio is called Samuel Entertainment. They reached out to me and introduced the game to me. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, by the way. I'm just doing this because I think the game looks interesting and you should know about it. Then, you can already see with these background clips, with this background footage, they have a unique graphical approach. And I mean this in a positive way, to be honest. The game looks very vibrant, personable, and it's a low poly style. That has actually quite some benefits. Let's have a look at that. It's easier to develop. Overall, time for development drastically reduced, cost reduced. That is very important because the studio is only a couple people. I think it's four or five right now. So having this will probably guarantee that the development goes smoother. Lower polygon count and simplified traders mean increased performance. Almost everybody should be able to play the final product. So there is not really a barrier for you to get into the game because your PC is probably a little bit older. Almost everyone can run it. And to be honest, this doesn't look bad. It's just very unique. And a few games just recently showed. Let's have a look at Fallout, guys. Or what was the other one? Phasmophobia. Those are games that do not have great graphics. I personally would like something, you know, gameplay over graphics. That would be a nice change. And again, I personally am digging the style of this art concept. It will definitely not be for everybody, but give it a chance. Let's have a look a little bit more. There will be multiple game modes. So what do we have here? We have a standard survival run. Where you explore, collect supplies, build bases, and so on, in a single public server. And then you have scavenger runs, random public server with a randomly generated character. So basically everything that you scavenge, loot, and get there will be, at the end of your run, transferred to the survival mode. And yes, that does sound a lot like Escape from Tarkov. 
which is not a bad thing. Escape from Tarkov is a good game. So maybe this will be an Escape from Tarkov Lite, so everybody can run it. I don't know how complex the game will be, but yeah. Also, there will be custom servers, which I personally think will be quite nice. Um, we would like to have that a little bit more in the games that we are currently playing or that I'm currently playing. Lots of people are asking for custom lobbies for Hunt Showdown. And imagine we would have custom lobbies for Escape from Tarkov. There's lots of things you can do with that. So, that is pretty cool. So, this is Anadolo, and I would say you get the concept of the game right now. Let's hop into the next topic. Up next, I would like to talk about the map of Anadolu. Okay, here we go. Let's talk a little bit about the map. So, with picking Turkey as their main region, they have a broad variety regarding uh, scenery they can take. There are ruins, there are caves, jungles, power plants, villages, and way more. So, this is already a good background for the game. And now to get a little bit more specific, where is the game set? I already mentioned that, but not the timeline. So it's a near future in post-apocalyptic Turkey. And the first demo will be in Cappadocia. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And that is a semi-arid region in central Turkey. So we'll probably see something like a desert, maybe the cave system first. How big will the map be? The map will be 1.25 km by 1.25 km. This does sound rather small, however, this will expand during the development. So, sweet! And what can you do on the map? Typical stuff, get resources, that means scavenge the area, there will be the option to trade with NPCs, there will also be the option to deal with other players, and there will be missions and raid factions. Sounds promising. All right, so we already talked about the graphical style, so I'm gonna skip that one here. Let's go to the next topic. Let's get going with the game features, guns and modular weapons. So yeah, what would be a survival PvE VP game without any guns? So let's talk about this. It sounds very interesting. There will be an in-depth weapon customization. What, what does that mean? You can disable any gun, craft even new parts. And I don't know exactly how they will do it, but you will be able to mix and match parts from other guns. You can probably build some crazy loadouts with that. So they're claiming there will be hundreds of potential variations. I don't know how super realistic this will be. Maybe it doesn't need to be super realistic, but we will definitely see some crazy gun builds with that one. Then let's stay in the weapon section and let's talk about the weapon physics. There will be bullet drop and there will be damage fall off. Realistic ones. There will be a variety of ammo types. So you can see already full metal jacket, armor piercing, hollow points, overpressure, tracer rounds. So they're keeping it non-fictional for now, which I think is pretty nice. Uh, you can see in the background how they like model the guns, how they develop them, what kind of guns they have. And I think, I know I mentioned this already, but the low poly style will definitely help creating and producing all these weapon parts. If you have to do this with realistic graphics like in Hunt Showdown or Escape from Tarkov, I mean, I'm not a game developer, but I'm pretty sure this takes way longer. Let's see how this will turn out. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll see some gun build videos for Anadolu in the near future. But maybe, it, let's say in the future, near future, we will talk about the release date a little bit later. But next up, we are going to talk about base building, modular base, base defense. Up next, game features, modular base defense. Okay, so base building will be a major topic in Anadolu, or at least it looks that way. So, modular base defense, or modular base building and upgrading and expanding your base. 
there will be different segments that you can choose from to upgrade your base, classrooms, living quarters, shooting ranges, research labs, and so on. You can see them right here on the screen. And each one of the segments will most likely have a different function for your base. So the medical bay will probably give you medical supplies. The gardens will probably give you the opportunity to maybe plant crops and harvest food. There will be multiple ways how you can power your base. Solar panels, nuclear reactors. There are a couple more. This will be very interesting because I think this will also influence a little bit how you have to defend your base because solar panels, they have to be, well, at least on top of the base or outside of the base. So maybe they're vulnerable, but maybe cheap. And a nuclear reactor is probably safe in the middle of your base, but, well, a nuclear reactor and safe in your base. Never mind. Uh, and that one will probably be super expensive. There's also multiple ways how you can defend your base. So you can reinforce barricades, you can set traps, security cameras, barbed wire. We will have to see how all of this will work in the end game. Because they claim you can play the solo, but they're putting so many features in there. And um, I also don't know exactly how the rating will work. What happens when you're offline to your base? When you're playing on a public server questions over questions but uh, we will cover this probably into the, in the interview chapter so let's hop to the next topic and that should be farms and labs and more game features farms and labs okay so you can have your own farm and even inside as you can see i mean sure that is possible where you can grow and harvest plants and vegetation. You can also genetically modify plants. I don't know how this will look in the game. To create potent chemicals and resources and all of this, the food and the plants that you grow will be used to feed your clan. And you will also get crafting resources for your labs, where you create complex chemical compounds and research and develop new pharmaceuticals, where you get health supplies for your clan. I don't know how long it will take to craft something because the process of you need to grow the plant first. I will show you right now here how they do morphine. So you have to grow the plant, harvest the plant, get the stuff out of the plant and then craft the morphine. Yeah, this is nothing that you do under pressure when your base is getting attacked, which might be a good thing because then you have to plan in advance might be a challenge when you just start your base and you're constantly under attack. What I do like about this crafting method that they will have is there are multiple blueprints for the same item. For example, if you want to craft a mat kit, you don't need component A and B to craft it. You can also use component C and D which I personally like because, of course, a few things you can craft out of different materials. If I want to craft a backpack, why do I need two specific kind of clothes? I can use everything else to craft backpacks. It's kind of, hmm, looking at you, Taco. Nah, just kidding. Um, so yeah, that's it for farm slabs. And I also talked a little bit about the crafting. I didn't see much yet regarding that besides what you can see here in the background clip. Looking forward to see more there. All right, then let's have a look at electricity in this game. The final game features of this video, electricity and hacking. All right, let's start with electricity. So I already mentioned it, but there will be a broad variety of power sources that you can choose from. Wind farms, solar farms, generators, nuclear power plants, all of them will have their pros and cons. The first ones will probably be cheap, easy to build, will probably not generate a lot of power, and the other ones will be probably end game, or at least a nuclear power plant sounds like end game, and will produce lots of energy for your base. There will be a charging system, so if you use laser sights, flashlights, you will need batteries. Maybe not in the initial build, not in the initial demo, but in the release product, hopefully. Other games are doing this as well or are planning to do this. 
for example, Escape from Tarkov, your night vision goggles right now, they don't need any batteries. Batteries in Tarkov are kind of like, yeah, okay, there's some trades where I can use that. Uh, say some crafting, but a real use for batteries right now does not exist. I like the interface from this whole electricity and also right here from the hacking. So it works with commands, not just you, you click a few buttons on your screen and it's doing something you have actually learned or remember the commands and then work with those. I already love that in the console in GTFO where you actually had to use real commands to operate that thing, so that was pretty nice. The hacking itself can be used to infiltrate enemy bases, so to spread viruses to some traps, sabotage power supply, gather intel with ciphers and commands, what I already mentioned. And you can even do this uh, if the defenders don't pay attention, they don't even know that you will attack them. So, there are also countermeasures though, so how do you defend your base with hacking features? Monitoring bandwidth and power usage to look for intrusions. Yo, alright. Penetration tests. I'm not gonna make a joke. Your own base to find weaknesses and share digital files with other players through in-game USBs and email. That sounds nice. That actually sounds pretty amazing. Um, how this will turn out in a real practical gaming environment will be interesting. Yes, I will troll the shit out of people with um, the USB sticks and emails where you can basically give them the wrong digital files and sell it for a lot of money. You, okay, I'm an evil person. Let's, uh, I would say let's jump to the next topic. Alright, my opinion. Why should you be interested in Anadolu? Okay, first of all, it's always difficult to evaluate a game that early in development. So, take all of this, what I'm gonna say, with a little bit of caution. So, why do I think you should be interested in Anadol? First of all, I personally like to support small developer teams in the games. Like, I think that EA, Ubisoft, and all of these companies, they have enough money from us, so... Uh, they don't need our support, in my opinion. So, sometimes it can pay off to support these guys, like the small teams. The graphic style is definitely something new, something refreshing. I don't know how that will feel when you actually play it. But for me, the art style, right now, is a plus. The model of weapon modding sounds amazing. Also, different crafting approaches. That's super nice. The idea is fantastic so far, but it's an idea. Uh, an interesting title definitely for clans because of all these interactions you can have with your base and how important raiding will probably be. And this is one of the games that focuses more on the gameplay depth. Like simple graphics, more focus on the gameplay. So gameplay over graphics. There will be dynamic destruction, like you can demolish structures, place explosives, penetrate materials to create see-through bullet holes, breachable floors and walls for tactical advantage. That is all oh, pretty amazing. And when you look at like the health and damage system, there will be a per appendage damage system, different ailments like fractures, concussions, sprains, starvations. There will be bandages for day kits, antibiotics, pain relievers, and so on. All of this sounds very detailed, very interesting. However, um, I, I would say this is a very ambitious project, which is not a bad thing. Uh, however, the team is small. And without a demo and the proof of constant updates, yeah, I'm going to be careful with the hype. I see the potential of the game, it's there, what will the devs do with it, we will have to wait and see, because an amazing idea is nothing without a passionate and a professional approach, and even then, it might not work out, so, <laughs> see you in 2023, we'll see. Um, let me give a few examples, I'm also backing Marauder, which is Space Tarkov, um, very small sandbox right now, 
but the devs are constantly putting out updates and I'm enjoying the game and it's again like a game that will probably have early access ready for Steam next year. However, there are also some not so good examples for backing smaller teams. Um, it saddens me to say that because I actually introduced the game to my channel a while ago. Dead Matter right now went radio silent, which is not a bad thing as long as they're fixing the game. And they announce a new update probably soon. Let's see. Um, so be careful with the hype. I think the potential is there. I will drop all the links that you need in the comment section and in the pinned comments. So if you want to back the game, if you do a little bit more research on your own, I will give you the resources to do so. I will drop also a link to their Discord. I will drop also a link to my Discord. I hope I can stream something soon. So there will be also a link to my stream in the description. Yeah. Um, so liking the game, liking the idea, lots of good things, super ambitious, a few things. Like if there's like hundreds of different weapon builds you can do, if there is so many details, it will be tough. It will be tough looking forward to that. If they need my support, I will be there. So fingers crossed. Let's go to the final section. Almost the final section. Almost the final section. Let's jump to the FAQ. Let's talk about the frequently asked questions. Because otherwise I will have them non-stop in the comment section. Okay. Almost the final chapter. Frequently asked questions. I didn't cover everything in the video. I can't. It's just too much. The video will be even longer. So I shamelessly stole these FAQ questions from their Discord and put it in my video. I hope they don't mind. So, how many people can play in a group? Not decided yet, depends on starting base location, up to six players. Then, is there PvE? The focus will be on PvP, but PvE elements, they do exist. There will be NPC traders, NPCs to hire to defend your base. Okay. NPC enemies are obvious, and maybe some wildlife, we will see. Any plans for console? It's not a priority at the moment, but never say never. That's an actual quote from the devs. What about the weather? There will be dynamic weather, day and night cycle, depending on what biome you're in. Okay. Will there be a repairing mechanism? Yes, definitely. Will there be hunting and fishing? It's currently low priority. It depends on whether we want that. Farming is planned, so hunting and fishing would be a natural extension. How many concurrent players will be, as, will be on a server or will a server support? The goal is 60 plus players per server. I think that is, that's a good goal. Oh, need a bigger map then though, but they're working on it. Where do you guys live? Across the United States and Europe. What technology does the game use? It's using Unreal Engine 4, but they're planning on upgrading to Unreal Engine 5 this year. Will the game be released on Steam? Assuming they will meet their funding goals. Yes, release is planned on Steam early access in the first quarter of 2020. Yes, this is not a typo, it's 2023. Again, as you can see, everything's early development, so some of these answers might change during the development process. I also asked them, what is the end game? And to be honest, this is such a complex question, it's hard to answer. The core gameplay loop will be build a base, explore map, complete dynamic quests, trade, raid other bases to get resources, I mean, you can read yourself. Um, and the end game will be a fully upgraded base and you have full control over the resources near you. However, this is, again, a very complex question. It's not easy to answer, especially at the current development stage. This will be something for the interview. What kind of interview do I mean? Let's have a look. All right, and the final chapter, let's talk about an interview. So this is the final chapter, um, an interview with the devs. No, it's not done yet. Uh, this is basically a heads up for you guys who are probably interested in the game by now. If you're interested in an interview with the devs, let me know in the comment section and write your questions in the comment section. I will take some of the questions, obviously not all of them, and then discuss these questions in an interview with the devs and the interview will be then on YouTube. That it is a pretty sick opportunity. Take it. Um, 
I will just skip the troll questions, so please save your time and my time. And uh, I will probably wait for two to three weeks and then I will close the question application and then I will uh, contact the devs and have the interview. So that's it with the video. That's Anadolo. Uh, I tried to cover lots of topics without making the video too long. I normally fail with that, but hey, there we are. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video about Anadolo and I hope I can create more videos for that in the near future. See you in the next one. So, Anadolu. It looks interesting, and I mean this in a positive way, but as always, we will have to see what the developers will give us. They interact a lot with their community, so that is already a plus. Also, they give us updates on a regular basis regarding their development progress. What's your first impression? Leave a comment in the comment section, and don't forget your questions. I hope I can show you something nice in the next weeks or months. People that are way beyond nice are here on this wall. Thank you guys a lot. Thank you for watching. The links regarding anything that might be interesting are in the description should you be interested to do some research on your own. I see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye bye.